Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 156. Page 156 and today is our lesson number 53. Let's take a look at it. The exact same problem, the exact same problem also appeared in the older version of the, of the, of the exam in this book, Practicing to Take the GRE General Test, 10th edition. This book contains seven exams based on the old format, but because of the fact that the quantitative comparison questions have not been changed, they have not been uh, modified, they have not been taken out of the exam. Therefore, if you want to practice, if you want to get more practice on these questions, these are called quantitative comparison. If you want to practice more of these questions, acquire this book from somewhere. It has seven exams. Each exam has 30 quantitative comparison questions. Therefore, it has 210 questions in it. And I have put together videos solving every single one of those 210 problems. Just go to my channel and look for the quantitative comparison questions for the GRE and you'll find it. And I would recommend that you watch the video that I taped earlier, some time ago when I was doing that book. <coughs> Just type in this tag. Just type in this tag, GRE Math, Day 120. Always make sure that you put the page number in it. Page 302, 10th edition. It will pop right up. There are, there are two ways of solving this problem. One is what I call the classical way, the traditional way, the orthodox way, the geeky way, the nerdy way, the academic way, the proper way, the way a mathematician will solve this question in the abstract manner. And the other one is what I call the quick and dirty way. The quick and dirty way here is simply to plug in a number. Plug in some value for x. Let's plug in, let's plug in, what should we plug in for x? Let's plug in, since we are told in this question, if you read the question carefully, on the very top of it, between the two columns, you must always pay attention to it. I'm going to pick up the book and actually show it to you because it's important. Here's the column 1, column B, and on the very top of it, uh, there is some st statement there. You must pay attention. You must pay attention to what is given to you on the top of the two, between the two columns on the top, because it pertains to the whole questions there. Here we are told that x is an integer greater than 1. x is an integer is a very fancy way of saying that x has to be a whole number, has to be more than 1, they tell us. Let's plug in 2. Let's just see what happens. If x equals 2, let's plug in x equal to 2. Then here we have 3 raised to 2 plus 1. 3 raised to 2 plus 1 is 3 raised to 3, which is 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. And here we have 4 raised to x, and x is 2. So that's 16. Based on the work that we have done so far, the answer is A. Notice how I qualified my statement. I said, I did not say the answer is A, I said based on the work that we have done so far, I put a condition on it, I qualified it, I put, I put a constraint on it, I put I attach if you like in the colloquial sense, I attach strings to it. Let's learn this one, shall we? What does it mean to qualify a statement? I would like you to learn it properly. I'm going to find out what day I covered it. The word qualify has two meanings. Day number 27. Just type in, just type in this tag, vocabulary, GRE vocabulary, day 27, and you will learn this word from one of my vocabulary videos that you will find also on the YouTube. So, I did not say, we did not say that the answer is A, what we said is that the based on the work that we have done so far, the answer is A. What does this A answer, what does this answer of A tell us? It does not tell us what an answer is, but it does tell us what the answers are not. Listen very carefully. It does tell us what the answers are not. There are four possible answers here. A, B, C, and D. What does it mean when you pick an answer choice A in these questions? In the quantitative comparison question. What does it mean when we pick answer choice A? What we are claiming here when we pick answer choice A is that 
the quantity in column A is always bigger. Quantity in column A is always bigger. What does it mean when we pick B for the answer choice? If we pick B for the answer choice, what we are claiming is that the quantity in column B is always bigger. But the quantity in column B could quantity in column B could not possibly be always bigger because when we have because we have found one instance when it is not the quantity in column B is not bigger here. So it couldn't possibly be always bigger. Answer cannot be B. We do not know at this point what the correct answer is, but it's not B. Answer is also not C. Because the answer of C would have meant, it would have meant that the two quantities are always equal. Well, the two quantities couldn't possibly be always equal because we have found one instance when they are not. At this point in the game, answer is either A or D, but we do not know for a fact that it is A, which is why so many people missed this question. When this question was given in the real exam, believe it or not, believe it or not, four fifth of the people, four fifth of the people picked the wrong answer. They probably picked A for the answer. Only 20% of the people got this question right. Well, I just gave away the answer, didn't I? I just gave, gave away the game. So all you have to do at this point is just keep plugging in, see what happens. Let's plug in, let's plug in x equals to 3. If you plug in x equals to 3, then here we have 3 raised to 3 plus 1, 3 plus 1, which is 3 raised to 4, which is simply 3 times this amount. And here, x raised to 3, X, oh sorry, 4 raised to 3 is simply going to be 4 times this amount. So now we have 81 and now we have 64. The answer is still A. So what do we do? Should we plug in one more time or should we pick A for the answer choice? Well, maybe people have find as far as this and they stop. What you have to understand here, here's the, here's the part they're trying to figure out, that they're trying to see if you understand here. What you have to understand is here, it doesn't matter where these two quantities start out with. See, see, x has to, well, I raised it, they tell us that x has to be more than 1. If x has to be more than 1 and if x has to be a whole number, the smallest number that x, the smallest value that x can take is 2. In which case, this was 27 and this was 16. It doesn't matter where they start out with 16 and 27, there's a big difference there. What matters is the point, what matters is the fact that because of the fact that each time you increase the power by 1, listen carefully, each time you increase the power by 1, Regardless of what, how small this quantity is, 16 compared to 27, regardless of how small it is, because of the fact that it is being multiplied by 4 each time, and this quantity is going to be multiplied by 3 each time, eventually this column is going to catch up. Eventually this column, this column B is going to catch up column A, and it's going to overtake it. And the direction is going to change. Right now it's A and A. Let's plug it one more time and see what happens. Eventually it is going to happen where quantity in column B will become bigger than quantity in column A. Because of the fact that whatever, whatever, however small the quantity in column B is, it doesn't matter. Because of the fact that it is being multiplied by 4 each time, and the other quantity is being multiplied by 3 each time, it's just a matter of time when quantity in column B is going to catch up with A, and it eventually it's going to overtake it. Let's do one more time. x equals to 4. If x equals to 4, here we have 3, three raised to 4 plus 1. 3 raised to 4 plus 1 is 5 which is simply 3 times 81. 3 times 81. So 1 times 3 is 3. 3 times 4 is 24. Let's see what we get here. Here, 4 raised to 4 is going to be 4 times 64. 4 times 64. Let's see what we get here. They should line up properly so it looks nice. They're not lining up properly right now. I don't like it. There we go. 4 times 4 is 16. And carry 1. 24 plus 1 is 25. Voila! 243, 256, now the direction has changed. Before the answer was A, when X was 2, let me get this out of my hand so you can see it properly. When X was 2, the answer was A. When X was 3, the answer was A. When X is 4, now the answer is B. Answer change. Here it was A, A and B. We do not know what, which quantity is bigger. Depends on the value of the X. If X happens to be 2, quantity in column A is bigger, if x happens to be 3, the quantity in column A is bigger still, but anything after that, you will find that the quantity in column B is going to be bigger than this. But what about the first two scenarios? And because we do not know 
what exactly X is. All we know is that it is a positive integer more than 1. Now, had they told us that it's a positive integer greater than 3, then the answer would have been B. But because they tell us that X is an integer and, it is, and the fact that it's merely more than 1, it could be 2, it could be 3, therefore the quantity in column A could be bigger in these two scenarios or quantity in column B is going to be bigger in all the other scenarios and therefore the answer is D. The answer is D. The correct answer is D. I pick up one Morgan marker only to pick up the next one. Oh, what does it mean? I'm not sure if I covered this word in my vocabulary videos. We'll soon find out in a list of amps. Morbid. It means something that is dying or about to be dead. We have not lost, learned this word. I'll make sure that I cover it in the future vocabulary videos. Morbid, which means it's about to be dead. Uh, dying or about to die. I will see you tomorrow on day number 54, okay? Uh, where we'll do the problem with the three rectangles. Bye now.